So here we have a half inch tangential tool holder. They seem to be all the rage on YouTube and on the internet, so I figured I would try one. Let's take our half inch AXA tool holder and we'll get that, wait a minute, that doesn't fit. Either these guys sent me the wrong one or I'm an idiot. Spoiler alert, I need to learn to read product descriptions more closely. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. So as I said in the open, this is a tangential tool holder. And I ordered it from Eccentric Engineering. Now, I'm going to be right up front. This is not a paid advertisement for Eccentric Engineering. They didn't give me this. They're not giving me any kickbacks. I decided to order this, pay for this, put it through its paces, and give some feedback to you, the viewer, on whether or not this is a good idea. So the description that I failed to read in detail specifically said that the half inch tool holder has a 15 millimeter shank on it. Now there is a smaller tool holder that would have fit in my AXA tool holder. But again, I didn't read all the information and it's not like it was fine print. It's in big bold letters where it says that the shank is actually bigger than the cutting size. Now, I'm not exactly sure why the half inch cutting size is different than the shank size. That to me seems a little odd, but either way, it's a simple, simple fix. If you have an AXA tool holder and you want to use this, or you've done like I have and you've ordered the wrong one, all you have to do is get an oversized AXA tool holder, a 250-101T. I bought this one on Amazon and it cost me like $15. And now I have a tool holder that this tangential cutter fits into beautifully and allows me to make my cuts. Now, what if you don't have an AXA style tool holder? What if you've got the old school turret style tool holder? Well, this tool really adds the functionality to that particular tool holding design. And the reason is it has built-in height adjustment. If I loosen this set screw, I can now slide my high-speed steel up and down. One of the biggest complaints I had when I had a turret-style tool holder was the lack of height adjustment. I had to modify the tools or I had to use shims. It was really a pain. But this holder right here makes it super easy for me to adjust the height and get that tip perfectly centered on the work. Now, of course, I've got an AXA quick change tool post, so that's no longer an issue for me, but it is nice to have the adjustability. I can adjust on the tool holder, I can spin the adjustments here, or if I need a little more or a little less, I can fine tune it right here at the set screw. The basic parts that come in the kit are two tool blanks, they're shorter than this, this is one that I already had, a tool sharpener, Allen key, two different cutters, left hand and right hand. And it all works together fairly simply. Now, a tangential tool holder is actually old school technology, was invented almost 100 years ago, but they kind of fell out of commonplace. And I'm really not sure why, because these are an excellent cutter. Having put this through its paces, I am extremely happy with it. I'm gonna take some time and show you how this tool sharpener works. I'm gonna take a little bit of time and show you some cuts with this, but really, I'm not the best person to watch for machining tips and tricks. I am just okay as a machinist. There are so many other really good machining channels. I just wanted to give an overall review of this product, show you the basics on how to use it, and then if you want really good in-depth machining content, go see somebody else. As with anything, there is always room for improvement, and I ended up making a couple of tools to go with it, as well as modifying the slide on my tool sharpener so that everything works as it should, and we get the perfect grind here on the tip of this piece of high-speed steel. So, let me take you over to the bench. I'm going to show you the basics of how this tool sharpener works. If you end up ordering this, so you can get the full kit, which is everything that you see here. This is what I ordered. Cost me a little over $200 US. This right here is worth its weight in gold. 
It takes all the guesswork out. It allows you to line everything up perfectly and you can get every single piece of high speed steel that you are sharpening for this perfect right out of the box, which is a fantastic thing to have. So I've learned a few things with this. I've learned a few tips and tricks. I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you why I ended up making these two tools. Obviously, this is a fish gauge, and ultimately, this is a depth gauge for this. And again, we'll go over that. When I show you on the grinder, that grinder I have is really noisy. It's got a bearing that probably needs to be replaced. So I'm not actually going to fire up the grinder. I want you to be able to hear what I have to say. Not that hearing what I have to say is all that important. We've already established I'm not much of a machinist. Anyway so that you can hear what I have to say, assuming you want to, I'm not actually gonna fire up the grinder, but I will show you the basic concepts involved in using this tool sharpener to sharpen the high-speed steel. All right, so here we have the all-important tool grinding fixture. And again, this takes all the guesswork out. Well, as you're about to see, it takes most of the guesswork out. The problem is we have too many variables. Here's my grinding fixture. I can angle this to any number of angles. I can adjust the height. And we're also sharpening on something that is round. And so where you set it up can really affect the angle on the piece of steel that you're grinding. Originally, I took the piece of steel that came with the tool. It was already pre-ground with the 57 degree angle. And I got everything in and was able to use that to align all of my rest. The problem is recreating that, especially if something gets messed up on your tool and you're having to grind from scratch. So the first tool that I made was this fish plate and you can see the 57 stamped right in it. So basically the angle that gets cut into this piece of high speed steel is a 57 degree. Now I've got a 55 degree fish plate and I've got a 60 degree fish plate, and wouldn't you know it, 57 degrees is halfway between the two, or almost halfway. And I used those initially to get my settings, and they worked fine, but I thought, why not use the correct fish plate? So I ended up making this, and as you can see, we get a nice, tight fit. And it allows me to double check to make sure everything is set up correctly. The second issue I ran into when using this is how far the steel sticks out. Let me use this full piece to illustrate because it shows better what I'm talking about. All right, I'll put my guide. This is just a 90 degree guide. I double check it before I do any grinding, but it allows me to put the fixture up against, kind of hold everything in place and work it back and forth. Now, let me show you something. If I stick the high speed steel way out and we put it down here, we are making contact fairly high. And the further you get on this radius, the more angled it's going to become. On the flip side, if we pull it in close and tight, now we're grinding at almost a vertical up and down. And so for consistency in my grinds, I really needed a way to properly set the depth. And that's where this little tool comes in right here. And all this is, is a piece of steel that's had an angle milled in on the top and bottom. And it allows me to set my depth. This is a piece of 3 16th steel. And the reason it's 3 16th is I wanted to get it far enough away from the tool holder that you don't accidentally do what I did and run the tool holder into the grinder. I was not happy when that happened. And also you don't want it to stick out too far because the further out it is, the less stable it's gonna be. So this 3 16th piece fits right here. I can get it down and flush, and then we can tighten down the retaining screw. Once we have it set with the proper depth, we are ready to start sharpening. So this is not gonna be a master class on how to sharpen high-speed steel. There are all kinds of really good videos already out there. So I'm not going to go over all the tips and tricks and all that, but one thing I am going to tell you is you want to keep this cool. Most of the time, if I'm sharpening high-speed steel, I've got a little can of water and I'm holding the high-speed steel in my fingers and the moment that it gets too hot for me to handle, it's time to dunk it in the water. Now that's a little harder to do without submerging this fixture. So when I ended up sharpening these tools, I just brought my hose in for my air compressor 
And I used the same technique. When it got too hot to handle, I would blow air on it until it was cooled down. And that worked extremely well. So we take and we place it there. We get it lined up on my 90 degree guide. I found that if I put one finger here and one finger here, I could easily hold it up against the guide. And then I also put one finger on the high speed steel. That helped stabilize it and it also helped me to be able to push it forward and get it into the grinding stone. This finger also serves as my temperature guide. So as I am grinding it and working it back and forth, Again, when this finger gets to the point where the steel is uncomfortable, it's time to cool it off. And that's it. That's all you have to do. You have everything set up properly. It's at the correct angle. If it's not at the correct angle, you can make adjustments. You can measure it using my fish gauge. And I can adjust the height or I can adjust the angle of the guide plate to get everything lined up properly and be able to sharpen these tool bits. And that's all there is to it. Once you have a smooth face on this piece of high-speed steel, it's ready to go. There's no special angles that you've got to figure out or anything because this does exactly what you need it to. Ultimately, the thing that impressed me the most with this is the finishes that I was getting. This doesn't really show up on camera as well as it does to the naked eye. This is an absolutely gorgeous finish on this aluminum. You pretty much cannot feel any grooves, any ridges. You can see them ever so slightly. But the cuts that I was able to get on this tool using either the round blade or the pointed blade are absolutely spectacular. Here we have a piece of brass. And as you can see, that's almost... A mirror polish. I mean, it's just a really nice finish. Again, can't feel any grooves. My fingernail doesn't catch in anything. Super happy with the cuts that I'm getting on this. I even have a piece of cast iron. And again, I faced this piece of cast iron with this tool. I also cut the side with it. And the finish is just absolutely spectacular. In fact, I even ended up doing some machining on some ultra high molecular weight plastic and got an absolutely fantastic finish. There was no grooves whatsoever. I used the diamond tool bit rather than the round one. Sadly, I didn't shoot any footage of that or take any pictures. Ultimately, if you want something for really good finishes, that is the biggest takeaway from this. So the versatility is amazing. You can cut in both directions. You can use this fixture to sharpen your high-speed steel for threading. You realign the tool, you can thread with it. I've got a little bit of footage of that, and I'll show you me making some passes on a grade eight bolt that I was threading. Now, one of the things I'm most excited about using this tool for is the ability to thread with it. The typical blade that I showed you how to grind earlier does not have a 60 degree angle on it, which is required if you are threading. Thankfully, the sharpening jig that we've already looked at comes with a built-in way to easily cut this relief onto the end of a piece that's already been ground like this so that you can now have a threading tool. Now, let's say that you want to thread and that requires a 60 degree angle. You can see right there that I used the grinder to cut that section away and create that nice 60 degree angle. And again, the sharpening fixture comes with everything you need to do that. This area on the side that has been milled out with the correct angles allows you to take the piece of high speed steel and fit it in the slot. You can now bring it down here and work it right up against and grind that nice 60 degree angle. Then it's just a matter of turning the tool holder so that you have a true 60 degrees going directly into the work. And that was easily done by using a fish gauge. Before this bolt was in here, I ran everything up to the face of the chuck and made sure that it was properly aligned. I'm just gonna take a couple passes showing you cutting threads on this grade eight bolt. It's a great test to show just how stable this setup is since I'm cutting something that is so hard. Now, before you guys immediately jump down to the comment section and tell me that I'm doing this wrong, I know that I'm doing it wrong. I know that to correctly thread and minimize tool pressure, 
you need to angle this and feed it in on the angle of the thread. However, getting everything aligned so that it could easily appear on camera, it was easier to do it with the compound parallel to the work. It also is a good test because we're now seeing a lot more tool pressure. We're now seeing it on both sides. And you can see just how well this cuts. So we're gonna feed this in to 10 thousandths. Gonna apply just a little bit of cutting oil. And we're gonna take a pass. As you can see, that 10 thousandths pass cut clean, removed the material very nicely. So now I'm gonna go in an additional 10 thousandths for a total of 20. As you can see, it cut cleanly once again and it did a really nice job putting those threads in. What's interesting to me is the fact that I am doing this incorrectly. I am not using the compound to reduce tool pressure. And because of the cutting ability of this tool and how well it is set up, it is still cutting very cleanly and very effectively. Here I have a traditional tool with a 60 degree point cut in the end, and I don't get the quality of cuts when threading using this that I am currently getting using this. All right, made a few more passes, got it all cleaned up. Let's see how we did. Works for me. I am very happy with this tool. Overall, this was money well spent. In fact, I'm happier with this than some of my carbide tool holders. The fact that the finish is so immaculate on this and allows me to make just beautiful cuts is super nice. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to throw them down in the comments and I would love to get back to you. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.